So, um, on behalf of the um, family of Winnie Rift and uh, the trustees of the Winnie Rift Foundation, I wish to extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you here today. We really appreciate the effort that you've made to share this day with us and this moment with us as a family. <clears throat> Special welcome to my sister-in-law, um, Anna Rift, or who many of us know as Kriki, who has flown all the way from the Netherlands to, um, to be here, where she lives with her husband and her children. Um, we really appreciate it. Also a special welcome to Alexa Kirsten, um, known to many of us as Fuff. She can tell you why and where that name comes from. Uh, she's our guest speaker today, and she's traveled all the way from Marsden, and we really appreciate the fact that she's here with us. Today was not chosen arbitrarily as the launch date of the foundation. Today marks, in fact, the third anniversary of Winnie's death. It is our honored wish, as the family of Winnie Rist, that today be seen as a celebration of Winnie's life, and more specifically, a celebration of her compassion and her desire to make a positive difference in the lives of others. On Sunday, the 8th of May, 2016, we had the privilege as a family of celebrating Mother's Day for all the mothers in our family, and Winnie Rist was one. It was a beautiful, warm autumn day, very much like today, that only the Bulan can produce. And at one point during the meal, there's an opportunity to tell the mothers present how much they meant to us as children, grandchildren, and husbands. It was an opportunity to tell Winnie how much she meant to us as a mother and a grandmother. And little did we know that it would be the last opportunity we would have, because three days later, she was murdered by someone to whom she had been a mother for many years. This is just one of the many ironies that marked the senseless tragedy. Looking back, we realized what an incredible blessing it was to have had that opportunity to express our appreciation for Winnie as a mother and a grandmother at that moment in time. So if there's anyone here today fortunate enough to still have their parents with them, and there is something that you know you need to say to them but have not done so yet, don't delay another day. Do it now. Today is therefore also about mothers and grandmothers in all sectors of South African society. They are the precious and powerful cornerstones who so often form the foundation of family and ultimately of society as a whole. It was during the immediate aftermath of the senseless tragedy when we had so many questions to which there are no answers that we, as Winnie's family, sent God encouraging us that he would, as impossible as it seemed at the time, somehow eventually redeem this tragedy. We felt at the time that any kind of redemption of what had happened would be impossible. The one thing we wanted more than anything at that point as a family was for what had happened to be undone, to be reversed, for things to go back to the way they were. Many of you who have lost people close to you will understand what I'm saying. When something like this happens, you want more than anything as a family for the thing to be reversed. Looking back, we can now see why we felt that redemption was impossible. We had made the mistake of equating redemption with reversal. So we have come to realize over time that redemption is not reversal, but is in fact something far greater. God was not going to reverse what had happened, or remove it, or spare us the consequences. We were to go through it. There was no squirming away, or burying our hands, heads in the sand. And the through it we went, coming out the other side as a family and as individuals, changed, closer to God, more firmly planted on the solid foundation of our faith than we were before. What Winnie Rist was trying to achieve at the time of her death, remains inspirational, despite what happened. She was endeavoring to play a role, however small, in helping those less fortunate than herself, by providing opportunities to disadvantaged people who came across her way to rise above their circumstances. And we choose as her family to live as she did, with open arms, not with closed doors and closed hearts. What she was doing for Nigel Pikes was a beautiful thing, and it is this legacy, as we as a family would like to perpetuate, 
in spite of what has happened. I think it's also important to mention that Winnie was a follower of Christ, and she followed him with all her heart. In terms of the Christian faith that Winnie held close to her heart, death is not the end. In fact, a recurring theme throughout the Bible and a fundamental principle of the Christian faith is that often before there can be life, there needs to be death. And death, in turn, gives birth to life. Not just life as it was before, but new life. Life multiplied and life abundant. And the following verse in the Bible comes to mind. You can find in John 12, 24. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Now Jesus, of course, was speaking about his own impending death. But there is something of an echo here of what we are perhaps witnessing today. So that not just one or two lives would be impacted, which was the case when while we was alive. But somehow, through this foundation, having been um, coming to being because of her death, many lives would be touched and changed. So although today marks the official launch of the Willis Foundation, it was already established almost exactly a year ago on the 3rd of May. <clears throat> Sorry. We opened a bank account in June 2018 and with donations from various family members started with a budget of 120,000 Rand. Nearly half of which has been allocated to seven beneficiaries in respect of the current year. So although we have only just started and the foundation's beginnings are small, really a lives have been touched. You will hear from some of the beneficiaries in this regard shortly. We know that there are already a dearth of NGOs aimed at social betterment of all kinds in the Cape Winelands. And in Stanovosh in particular, we would therefore not be surprised if a kind of NGO fatigue has already set in. And our aim is not to duplicate, but to collaborate with existing NGOs working in the same space where it makes sense to do so. However, we are also looking at, to use funds available to us in new and creative ways to achieve measurable results. The bottom line is we want to create a platform or vehicle to help ordinary families do extraordinary things using many different touch points. We are still in the process of finding our feet and we still have a great deal of brainstorming to do in order to find the most appropriate operating model going forward. Our mission in short is to partner with donors, beneficiaries, employers and other like-minded organizations to support poorly resourced and deserving people in the Western Cape Winelands, irrespective of age or race. The central idea is to provide access to educational opportunities and skills training for the purpose of realizing potential and helping people gain dignified, meaningful employment. The support will be both in the form of financial assistance and mentoring. 